We are off and running on a Monday evening here on VSIN Prime Time alongside Jonathan Von Tobel. I am Tim Murray. Four teams left in the NCAA tournament, six left in the women's NCAA tournament. And what a showdown we have tonight in Albany as Iowa and Caitlin Clark take on LSU, a rematch of last year's national championship game. And one odds maker in Vegas said they anticipate this to be the highest handle women's college basketball game ever. That game coming up top of the next hour. The Iowa Hawkeyes currently a two-point favorite. Mr. Von Tobel there. I'm here. And uh, we got six NBA games to hit on this evening. Baseball up and running. We are in the final month of the NHL and NBA regular seasons. We're in the month of the NFL draft. We got a lot going on, Mr. Von Tobel. Masters as well. Masters as well. Yes. How could I forget? Kentucky Just, Derby? No. Yes. No, that is in May. May. Okay. Yes. But uh, we are... Uh, Shows how much I... Oh, pe- people are... Uh, it's never a slow time on the sports calendar. Yeah, maybe July. Uh, but a lot going on, a lot to get to. Summer League in July. <laughs> That's true. That is Yes, that is true. We should have all known that Victor Wembanyama was, uh, was going to be this ridiculous of, uh, of a player. Maybe shouldn't have bet against him to win NBA Rookie of the Year like this guy did. Um, I did too. Lot to uh, lot to look at tonight, but let's just start real quickly as we sit With the Final Four, which will take place in Phoenix, or Glendale if you want to be specific about it. UConn right now, 11.5 or 12-point favorite against Alabama. NC State, 9, 9.5-point underdog against Purdue. We've got two one-seeds, we've got a four-seed, and we've got the 11-seed in NC State. But the biggest spread is not 11 versus 1. It's 4 versus 1 because yet again, the Yukon runaway freight train continues to pummel anyone in its path. 23 to 23 was the score between Illinois and Yukon, and 53 to 23 was the same game. Yep. I still can't believe it happened. It did. It was never in doubt if you laid the points with Yukon. And we joked when we had Chuck Esposito on the program. Prior to, I believe, this Illinois game, and pretty you sharp said, line move, huh? Yeah, pretty said, sharp line. Yeah, you said, ah, you know, you should set it at what'd you say, thirty nine? I think thirty six and a half, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So we we've got a graphic for you. Ten and oh ATS in their last ten NCAA tournament games. Of course, the last ten NCAA tournament games, going back to last year, winning the national championship, and the fact that they. And I know this has been said a million times, I'm sure, on this network, but it just bears repeating. And look at that graphic. It's just asinine to think that they are covering everything with ease. The closest cover was the Northwestern game, and really, they just took their foot off the gas pedal. Well, and here's the, I think what the crazy part is, if you look at the column at the right, there is a similarity, which is every single one of those point spreads is less than double digits, and they were winning and covering by a wide margin. The fact that the market has come around so much on UConn to the point where 27.5 point favorite cover, 13.5 point favorite cover, 12 point favorite cover, 8 point favorite cover, and here they are now again today, as you mentioned, sitting as a 11.5, 12 point favorite against Alabama. To me, that's the nutty part. It's obviously covering, but the fact that we're seeing, like with that graphic itself, the market has evolved. It has changed. It is growing. It's power rating on UConn. And yet it continues to clear these bars with relative ease. <laughs> That's the crazy part. And like the crazy part at the end, like if you were in theory to set that 32 and a half point spread or whatever it was, <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't have covered, but it's not like they would have failed to cover by 20 points. Like it's, it's, it's insane how dominant they have been up to this point. Y- you look at this North uh, Alabama team and I've had my concerns rightfully so about Alabama. They don't play much defense at all, but they have, the capabilities of getting, you know, red hot from three. And we think back to last Thursday. They were a four and a half, Alabama was a four and a half point underdog to North Carolina. They win that game. North Carolina was a one seed. Now they were the weakest one seed per all the metrics, but still they were a one seed and they were catching four and a half. UConn is a one seed and Alabama's catching 11 and a half or 12. So you're telling us that if UConn and UNC were playing in Glendale, 
this Saturday night, one versus one, that the market would be around eight. That is bonkers. But can you blame him? And people, I will tell you this, and we'll have odds makers on throughout the week. We'll talk to the people that we know. People are going to lay it. They're going to lay it because why wouldn't you? We showed you the graphic. I tried to get in front of that freight train on Sunday or on Saturday. It was not very fun at all because it's fun for a couple minutes. <laughs> it was 23-23. Yeah. I was like, all right, here we go. Finally. Nope. 30 0 run. 30 0 run. Well, and, and I'd say this outside of market ratings and everything we're talking about, it's a matchup that works really well for UConn. This is not a good defensive yeah. rebounding team. We've talked about this all the time. One of the biggest strengths for the Huskies is the fact that they can kill teams on both ends of the floor when it comes to the glass. And if you're going to give up second chance opportunities and mass to a team like UConn, they're going to take advantage of it. They're going to be able to do it. We have seen some of their most lopsided results, the Marquette games, for example come against teams that don't necessarily rebound particularly well. And here you are again, Alabama coming into this game, 272nd in the country in defensive rebounding rate, 311th, by the way, in defensive foul rate as well. So you're putting your opponents at the free throw line. You make those kind of mistakes against such a well-coached team. Like, Timmy, they're they're alive to cover the number outside of what we've seen in history. The matchup dictates that they're alive to cover the number. Look, Grant Nelson, uh, I I like Grant Nelson. He's, uh, He's got, what did we? And that scared Holy me too. Smokes. Look at behind us. What happens? Get the crap out of me. We got a big blue screen behind us. <laughs> this is not gonna lie. I'm a little freaked out right now. Yeah, it is a little. <laughs> I thought it was one of those like um what's the um what's the what's the the movies where you know the crime's legal for like you know twenty four hours purge. or whatever? Yeah, the purge, yeah, one of those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for those of you not watching with us, there's a giant blue screen behind us. We've lost uh we've lost all communication there. Uh, in the sports book, uh, had a quick diversion. Um, but Grant Nelson, what I was going to get to is my, my, you know, my ginger brother with the mustache, like Donovan Klingon's going to eat his lunch. Yep. So you would think that said, and we'll have all week to break this down. I'm not giving out a best bet right now on this particular game, but Alabama does profile like a team that could beat them. Why? Cause they could just bomb from three. Yep. And if they just keep hitting three after three, after three, that's the way and the method potentially to a victory. So we'll see where this number goes. 11 and a half, 12 right now for the Yukon Huskies, who once again, 10 and 0, not only straight up, but against the spread over the last two years in the NCAA tournament. The other game, I think everybody can't wait to see it. DJ Burns, the legend that is DJ Burns, who had one, one 20 point performance all regular season. Yep. And he has had two in the NCAA tournament, 29 points yesterday. And he will get to go up against Zach Eady, who had 40 and 16, and then cut down the damn net without a ladder. I would yeah. say, albeit pretty poorly. I, I, I think he did it. I think he did it more so just for, uh, just more so from a, like, this is pretty cool, but he did it pretty clumsily. You have some tweets that we uh, we got to read here I mean, about this, DJ Burns. Okay, so I didn't send these in. I think Britton sent these in. These are ridiculous, though. Um, Jim Nagy, uh, I think SB Nation, is that what it is? Senior Bowl. Senior Bowl, excuse me. Uh, got texts from a GM, assistant GM, and college director within an hour of posting this on Friday night. NFL interest in DJ Burns is a real thing. Anyone else having trouble watching NC State big man DJ Burns and not thinking about him kick sliding in pass pro or getting out on polls can't just be me. Um, it has to just be you. There was a sequence... In the first half, huh? Uh, Peter Schrager, NFL oh, Network, stop. spoke to and texted multiple scouts, GMs about NC State big man DJ Burns as an NFL offensive tackle prospect over the last 24 hours. He's listed at 6'9", probably 6'7", A-plus footwork, would get big turnout and potentially money if he participated in a pro day after the Final Four. Okay, the footwork's awesome. There's no denying that. It's nimble. I also watched him on a couple of possessions go, you guys got this. And like, would not even walk up past half court because he just didn't want to run back. Like when we're talking about pulling and doing all these things over the course of the game, you kind of got to work on those things. So, I mean, maybe like it's, I don't think he's going to go out there. It's funny because you can get money. You know, what is money in terms of what he's talking about? I guess maybe there is something there, but uh, there was, um, I feel like you got to work a little bit maybe on the conditioning if you're going to play NFL. Thankfully, where you have been restored uh, behind us. So, uh, can't wait to watch that. The purge is, uh, the purge is not coming. So, there you go. All week long, big spreads for two Final Four games. And I, I'm not going to. You don't have initial thoughts on either one? Uh, initial thoughts would be take 12, lay nine. Okay. Take 12 with Alabama, 
lay nine with Purdue. Initial thoughts would be lay it and lay it. Yeah. Uh, NC State, I, we'll, we'll get to this, the mathematics of, of what we saw yesterday. But the fact that they were only catching seven against Duke when two weeks prior they were catching 11 on a yep. neutral, I laid it at Duke. And boy, did right I play. feel dumb. The right play. All right. Other things to get to. We got our primetime primer as uh, we will get you thoughts on all of the NBA games. We got our best bets coming up bottom of the hour. As always, youtube.com slash Live. We're free first every hour of the program. We're going to head down to Baton Rouge. It's going to be our first on VEASAN primetime. We are going to break down a women's college hoops game, but for good reason. This game expects to be phenomenal between LSU and Iowa. Game coming up, 7 o'clock Eastern in Albany, New York. Final four bid on the line. Sure. And we will see if Caitlin Clark can uh, get revenge against a team that knocked her out last year. I had money on that game at LSU. Let's As do it. I. And I might have them again. Yeah, baby. Maybe Jimmy Ott can convince us otherwise. We are up and running. It's v Prime primetime. Best bets coming up bottom of the hour. But a preview of LSU Iowa live from Baton Rouge coming up on the other side. That's JVT. I'm Tim Murray. Come on back. VSIN Primetime with Tim Murray and Jonathan Von Tobel on VSIN, the sports betting network. You ever wanted to? Check out the betting splits data up at the website from DraftKings. Guess what? You can do it for free. Yeah, that's right. Next two weeks are free betting splits access up at vcin.com. You can check it out now. Just head to vcin.com slash splits. Check out all the data for free for the next two weeks. vcin.com slash splits. Let's check it out right now. That's Jonathan Von Tobel. I'm Tim Murray. Before we bring in our next guest, because tonight, a incredibly highly anticipated showdown in women's college hoops as LSU will take on Iowa in a rematch of last year's national championship game. And uh, I am looking for them. And uh, hold on. I don't have them right now. Oh, yeah, boy. What a bummer. Um, I should have had it ready to go. I know. Uh, but we will try to find those. While we look for those, let's bring in our next guest who is uh, helping us out. Courtesy of the progressive guest line is the man, the myth, the legend. That is Jimmy Ott down there on ESPN Baton Rouge. He joins us right now to preview this LSU-Iowa game. Jimmy, for those who have not been paying that close of attention, you think about last year how it ended for LSU winning the national championship putting up triple digits against this very Iowa team. And then they go to the portal and they get, uh, you know, Van Lith from, uh, from Louisville, bring everyone back. Why is this LSU team a three seed? And do you believe they're kind of coming into their own as we head into this epic showdown this evening? Well, they, they lost a few players, but they upgraded the overall talent level of the team without question. Um, and you, you, you guys know if you've watched a women's basketball for about 10 seconds this year, who Juju, uh, Juju is for USC, and you'll see her in the late game. You know, the freshman from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, was actually a bigger recruit than her, and she's really good. But, you know, Angel Reese is the star of this team. And, look, it was the perfect storm last year. And last year we kind of called it, you know, it's just women's basketball, bird versus magic. And I lived that. And, I, you know, I think it kind of is. And, I mean, and then you got round two uh, tonight. So, um, you know, whether it's, uh, Kim Mulkey, who drew a little criticism in Baton Rouge by us, like, all right, if you, if, you know, you've drawn more attention to this Washington post column, but you <laughs> yes. know, people started to get on her and then all of a sudden the LA times give wrap her a, a momentum swing in public opinion. And now, you know, she's, it's back to square one, but you know, no matter what it is, it is, it is Iowa versus LSU, and, you know, it's Caitlin Clark, and she's the star, no doubt. But LSU capitalized on whooping her on a big stage last year. They will not play that same game. That was a perfect game by LSU last year. So defending Caitlin Clark and also, you know, hitting all kinds of threes. You know, Sanders, the girl was six of seven from three uh, last year. You know, she's gone 
Well, like I said, there are different parts of this. And, you know, Angel restarted practice at LSU Basketball Media Day. She said, I'm glad to be back to basketball. You know, the swimsuit edition for SI, I mean, all kinds of uh, endorsements. Guys, the ABC, the local affiliate ABC, it was all LSU player commercials <laughs> during the commercial, the local spots. I mean, they, they've got all kinds of endorsements. Flo J, uh, you know, she is camouflage his daughter she's got a rap career going she's on the gatorade commercial as well uh, van lift has some stuff and well mulkey she's pretty popular and polarizing at the same point and that's where the angel reese is whether it's by design or not you know and listen there was a it was a topic of conversation of bad ruse on our show like hey, man that's a little too much me go go celebrate go the you know do the john cena do the ring to your own teammates not in somebody else's face and, you know, it, but others like, hey, you know, she did it first, whatever, you know, well, that one thing about it is this team does not care about the black hat. They embrace it and it gives them a little extra juice, a little extra swagger. And I'm going to tell you right now, two things about Angel Reese. One, with all her shenanigans, OK, and some of it's too much for me. She can play for me anytime. She 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 knows how to get after it and to, to a, an nth degree, as we saw in the SEC final against the 6 7 girl from South Carolina. She plays hard. She plays tough. She plays physical. She doesn't take bad shots. And for a low post player, she hits her free throws. But on the other hand, she'll reach for a cheap foul. Instead of going straight up on a shot block, she'll swat over for a cheap foul. And she's got to stay in this game for LSU. So, I mean, I, I, I think they're going to be one of them that comes. You know, she fouled out against Saturday, very late against UCLA. But she, if she stays in the game at uh, at home against South Carolina, I think they win. No way to prove it, but it certainly made a difference, and that's one thing to uh, to, to see. The other thing is Kim Mulkey spotted that you know Caitlin Clark for all that she does, she does kind of come from her hip on her release and said we're going to get into her and extend her range 10, 10 feet beyond the arc and get her before you know where she could just pull up where they're kind of sagging. She still has a little space. That was a big factor in last last year's game, but. Clark is phenomenal, um, but LSU's team is more talented this year. Are they better? I think so. I think so. Even so, the team that won it uh, last year. Make no mistake, last, this year's best team is South Carolina. Last year's best team was South Carolina. They beat the LSU on Super Bowl Sunday afternoon in Columbia by like 30. But LSU caught the breaks, and, and they made the best of it. And on the biggest stage against Iowa last year, they played the perfect game. They play. You're not going to see a hundred tonight by LSU. So Jimmy, right now we're looking at this market up to two and a half in multiple spots after opening one and a half. Uh, what do you what do you make of the line move? Do you think that this is after that Iowa State is getting bet here? Well, um, I took Colorado to point Saturday. How'd that work out? Huh. Not too good. So you know, uh, all those people that bet Iowa are right back on them. I'm looking at the things that I look at. Two thirds of the tickets are on Iowa. I mean. You know, people bet what they want to cheer for. I promise you, more people are pulling for Iowa than LSU tonight. So, I mean, it's, uh, hey, hey, I'm all about it, man. I love playing a contrarian side of the value here, and I'm hoping it gets to three. If not, I'll buy it to three. Yeah, two and a half right now. Pretty, I wouldn't say market-wide, but uh, the two and a halfs are starting to show as we are uh, almost uh, 40 minutes away from tip time. Uh, there's no doubt, plenty of eyeballs, plenty of handle. We'll talk more about that from uh, from the action side of things. Jimmy, I know you're busy. Let's uh, final thought before we let you run. Uh, you kind of hinted at it. LSU, you're looking to take the three if it gets there, buy up to three. Why do you think ultimately this LSU team covers tonight against Iowa? Uh, I said they play the perfect game. I, they're not going to duplicate it, but this team and this and this coaching staff does not shy away from the big stage. They are just fine on that big stage, and Angel Reese, their star, uh, likes it as well. Look, 33 years doing a sports talk show in Baton Rouge, I never dreamed we'd be talking about women's basketball as we are. And keep in mind, this is a program that went to five straight Final Fours under Sue Gunner and Pokey Chapman, but they're very popular. Everybody loves a winner, man, and you know, it's appointment It's appointment TV. It's appointment uh, TV for all this tournament for the LSU fans. Catch him on ESPN Baton Rouge. That's our good friend Jimmy Ott. Rumor has it you'll be out here in town, Jimmy, for that oh, LSU-USC game coming Labor Day weekend. Word on the street. Oh, Lord. Yes, indeed. We'll be doing it at Circus Swim. But, look, JVT, don't let him wax poetic about the Fighting Irish football, man. That's minor league stuff. Come, don't, oh, trust don't me. Don't get too out of hand there, man. Uh, it won't happen on my watch, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to go shine up that uh, that Music City Bowl championship that they had from a couple years ago, Jimmy. 
Thanks. All the Music City Bowl championships you want, we throw those in the garbage can. So. <laughs> Jimmy, always appreciate it, man. Guys, love you. See you, man. There he is, our good friend Jimmy Ott. He's just mad that Notre Dame took LSU's uh, offensive coordinator, Mike Denbrock. There you but, go. You know, jab on Jimmy. Um, but no, I'm looking forward to it. I think a lot of people are as well. And and I'll, and I'll be honest, too. Look, <laughs> I don't know about you, JVT, but first hour of our show, the you know weekend removed from the Final Four, did I anticipate ever talking women's college basketball? No, but I think a lot of people, there's no doubt the eyeballs will be on the first game. And I think there'll be eyeballs will be on the second game, too. With, uh, with Juju versus UConn. I mean, these two games uh, are, are vol- both very highly anticipated, you know, between uh, between LSU and Iowa and then UConn and USC. Yeah, I'd be very interested to see if we talk to some odds makers after today where this game stands when it comes to overall handle in comparison with the games that are on today, right? We were talking about relatively full slate of NBA, uh, obviously full slate of baseball, but in terms of handle, this might be one of the most wagered on events of the night, if not the most wagered on event of the night. Yeah, and it's interesting to note, just right behind us here at Circa, they have gone to 2.5-15. Yep. So uh, money coming in on Iowa, which shouldn't come as a surprise, but we will see oh. We will see if that gets to 3. That 15 actually just got scooped up. So uh, someone took the cheap 2.5 there on LSU. So maybe 2.5 is is that resistance point that we always talk about uh, for a lot, of, uh, a lot of different spots. You know, we talked about on uh, I think it was Thursday's show. What was that resistance point for San Diego State versus UConn? It seemed like it was 13. Obviously didn't matter because uh, UConn went out, the men that is, and won by 30. But right now, two and a half is the point spread between Iowa and LSU. Interesting to note there from Jimmy, though. He said, look, last year, a side that both you and I were on, after Caitlin Clark went nuclear against South Carolina, everybody talked about the performance that she had. You and I both came in on LSU. I think a number of people at the network did so as well. They put up 100 points. But as Jimmy said, they played the perfect game. Can that be duplicated tonight? It's going to be a great crowd. There's no doubt. And uh, we'll get to our best bets. Might have something in the in the hopper for oh LSU and Iowa. JVT, going to take a look at tonight's NBA slate. Any baseball? Uh, I got, yeah, I got a baseball bet Ooh, later today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little baseball best bet. As well. Best bets coming up. As always, you can watch us for free. YouTube.com slash VSIN Live, the first hour of the program. That's John Levon Tobel. I'm Tim Murray. Best bets for tonight coming up next. Right. is VSIN Primetime with Tim Murray and Jonathan Von Tobel on VSIN, the sports betting network. Welcome back in. A reminder to check out the website, vcin.com. It is absolutely humming. Brand new website that we rolled out about two months ago. Looks good. Tons of stuff up there. Best bets, the betting splits, which are currently free to everybody now for the next two weeks. Articles in every single sport, odds by state, and more. Check it out now, vsin.com. You know, I uh, I blame myself. You know, we, we didn't have my beloved Nationals on in the studio. They tie the game up. I asked to put the game on in studio, and the Pirates scored two runs. So it's my fault. I, bl- I take the blame. You know, tap the chest. Five to three, uh, Pirates, Nationals, your only baseball game going on uh, at this very moment, some opening days going on across. We do have a final from earlier today. Pretty impressive performance from the uh, from the Cubs. Quick question before we get to our best bets. Mm. Do we bet against the Rockies every single night? No. I mean, because I tried that over the weekend. It didn't really work out <laughs> particularly well. Um, so we got a couple of them, but not, ev- not everything in there. So, I mean, no, you can't do it. The prices are going to be ridiculous. I want to. I tried. It started out really well. It didn't end very well. <laughs> Five nothing loss earlier today. So we got a handful of baseball games, a bunch of baseball games, and the Braves shut out the White Sox earlier today, nine to nothing. So NBA slate, six games on the NBA slate, bunch of baseball games about to get underway. So let's get right into it. Mr. Von Tobel, as he mentioned, coming back from break, vcin.com. Make sure you always check it out each and every day. Best bets of the NBA, courtesy of this gentleman right here. And uh, let's get into it. What do you see tonight on the NBA card? Yeah, so I bet two things today. See, obviously, if they come to fruition here. Um, And both have moved a little bit, so we'll talk. First off, the bad teams. 
Portland Trailblazers on the road against the Orlando Magic. Trailblazers, they're on a road trip. They're on three straight up and against the spread on this road trip. How about this? This is my favorite nugget. Now, we can alter numbers to make things sound better, and I've done that just here. I'll explain. Um, <laughs> in the three games, again, 0-3 straight up and against the spread, Tim, on this trip, the Portland Trailblazers have closed, catching an average of 12.7 points in those contests. They have failed to cover by 17.2 points per game. It has been pretty bad. Now, they got smoked by like 50 points by the Miami Heat, which very much alters those numbers. But Portland has not been very good. They're starting three rookies. Could start four if your injury report uh, shakes out really poorly. Scoot Henderson, Rain Rupert, and of course, Chris Murray. That trio, negative 11.1 net rating. Chris Murray, my four. brother? Uh, what's that? My brother, Chris Murray? Uh, no, a different one. Oh, Actually, okay. the uh, the identical twin of Keegan Murray. Yeah, he spells um, it with a K, though. Yes, yes, indeed. K-R-R-K-R-I-S. Regardless, this team's just not in really good position. Their trio is not very good. It's got an offensive rating of about 110. Orlando is perfectly capable of dominating defensively. It's the last game of an eight-game homestand for Orlando. They're, they're fat and happy. They're at home. They're rested and ready to go. Might be their third game of four nights, but every single one of those games at home, so that's kind of offset. And you look, too, by the ability of Orlando to really take out some of these really bad teams. Uh, they just absolutely destroyed Memphis the other day, 118 to 88. They held the Grizzlies to an offensive rating of 73, which is not very good. 73 points over the course of 100 possessions. So this is a game that you're going to get a focused Orlando team, too. They are trailing the Knicks, the, by the way, their most probable first-round opponent, by only a game for home court in the first round. So they want to do everything possible to continue to win. They're not going to overlook Portland. They need every victory they can. I laid 16. Uh, we're up to 17 at multiple spots now here. It's kind of the trend with these bad teams in some of these opponents, Tim, which is the market's not going to be shy about moving against them here. So I would expect this closes about 17 here. I, I kind of feel like 16 and a half is like the ultimate number that you want to lay, but I think the Orlando Magic are going to come in here and absolutely destroy this Portland Trailblazer squad. I want to jump in real quickly because you did on Friday's show <laughs> a game in which the Miami Heat won by 60. Yeah. 60. You said you'd rather lay the first half, which also came home with no sweat whatsoever. So looking at this game today, would you, at this point, as, a, as it's up to 17, there is a 9.5 out there. We'll call it 10, though. Would you look 10 first half? Still prefer full game? You're, you're clearly paying a little bit of a tax, right? Right. Full game, 17. Half time, our first half is 10, so you're paying that extra tax there. If no one has jumped in just yet, and you should always check out Mr. Von Tobel's write ups on vsin.com, you can get the better number. But would you rather lay 10, first half, full game 17? What would you prefer there? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think you could probably go with um, like first half, or, you know, I'm not brave enough, but you can double up too, because they like some of these competition or excuse me, some of these contests have been really non-competitive for Portland. Uh, you look in their first matchup for, you know, the other day, they play Atlanta. Uh, they lead by three at the uh, the second mark, and then they get smoked in the uh, second quarter. They give up 40 points there, right? The uh, Magic game, or excuse me, the uh, Miami Heat game that we talked about, a little competitive in the first five minutes, absolutely dominated. I think they were up by 30, Miami was at halftime of that game. Like, they, this has been a, a team that's really playing out the string. So I wouldn't say no to first half, especially because – while you do have a little bit more variance because you're only playing two quarters, you also do eliminate the potential of that backdoor being open with such a big number if that's going to be the case. Uh, Miami yesterday, too, was a pretty good example where Washington snuck in real quick to the backdoor, but then a late three for no reason gets Miami to cover. So you're always playing with danger with such big numbers for a full game. All right. Uh, for me, we talked about it a little bit earlier. LSU plus two and a half. A little women's hoops tonight. The, the Elite Eight, not the Final Four, the Elite Eight this evening in Albany. Should be a fun one coming up top of the hour. Looking forward to watching it here as we could take off this Nats game because they've fallen apart. Since whoa, we, whoa, whoa, wait. Since we turned Brian Hayes on. knocked one in, right? There we go. That's what we need. <laughs> but I'm going to uh, go against Iowa. Uh, we heard great analysis from our friend Jimmy Ott down in Baton Rouge telling us, look, last year, perfect performance from LSU to get that victory. But when you just look at it from a talent perspective, I do believe this LSU team – is more talented. So I'm getting the more talented team, maybe not with the most talented player, and Caitlin Clark, who's unbelievable, but I'm getting the more talented team, catching some points here, catching two and a half pretty much market-wide. I will take those. I, I do think they will win this game. I think it should be a fun one, uh, but I'm going to take Angel Reese. I'm going to take uh, Haley Van Lith. I'm going to take this LSU team that seems to be coming together at the right time. And I, I do think that you know, what Jimmy brought up was, you know, you think back to the SEC tournament, and how competitive this LSU team was against South Carolina, who is a juggernaut, 36-0. and They are a double-digit favorite in the Final Four uh, in their matchup that's already been set up. 
they have been crushing everybody in their path, even though Wes Reynolds' Indiana squad uh, was competitive in the Sweet 16. So uh, give me LSU plus two and a half. By the way, how about this from uh, John Ewing over at BetMGM looking at Caitlin Clark's player props tonight. A couple nuggets from John Ewing. The, there are more bets on Caitlin Clark props than any other player in the NBA this evening okay. at BetMGM. So again, to the theory that this might be the most wagered on game of the night. 70-plus percent of the bets are on all of Caitlin Clark's overs. At BetMGM, 31.5 points, juiced minus 130 to the over. Over 5.5 three-pointers made, 9.5 assists, 6.5 rebounds. 70% or more of the bets on the overs for Caitlin Clark. And as for the betting splits for this particular game, 66% of the bets as of 25 minutes ago, 61% of the money at BetMGM on Iowa. So I'm going against the uh, the favorite, or the popular play, I should say, uh, in Iowa. How about this also? Uh, favorites this year, ATS in the NCAA tournament on the women's side, 27 and 31 ATS. So I will take the dog uh, catching two and a half in LSU, and uh, we will keep our eyes on those player props. 32 and a half at DraftKings now, and nine and a half for assists for Caitlin Clark. I will take the defending champions, LSU, plus the two and a half. What else you got for us in the NBA? Yeah, I got one more. Um, so it's interesting line journey here for Phoenix and New Orleans. A very big game, obviously, when it comes to the Western Conference. Pelicans have actually slipped now to sixth in the Western Conference, and of course, Phoenix is kind of fighting around there, more than likely going to finish in the play-in. But we saw this open one, Tim, in favor of New Orleans, and then overnight moved to about one, one and a half in favor of Phoenix, and sat there for quite a while. And as I wrote up today, this morning, uh, sorry, I don't buy it. You know, a lot of people would look at the Phoenix Suns and go, okay, they just went to Oklahoma City and lost by 25 points, and on the surface, you're like, that's fine, except for Shea Gilles Alexander didn't play in that game. So there is, as I put it, you know, a little bit of shame in a loss like that. This team is inconsistent, and the market's been way too high on them all season long. Phoenix on the season, 30-41-3 against the spread. Uh, that's for the entire year. As a road favorite, they are 9-13-2 against the spread with 10 outright losses. The market's just been too high on Phoenix. And you saw this morning on the overnight the move toward Phoenix. And it was like, look, we know Brandon Ingram's not going to play. He's been out for a while. But either way, it was not a number I was like, you deserve to be underdogs to the Phoenix Suns. You are two equally rated teams, even with the absence of Brandon Ingram. So I bet a small money line price on New Orleans. It is now flipped, not that much. Pelicans are now one and a half point favorite across the board. That is more of a fair number. I thought it was layable. You know, if you can find about a minus 120 money line price, I think that's a playable number here. But I've got the Pelicans as a small money line underdog against the Phoenix Suns. It was just a number that I completely disagreed with. As I call them, right, the plays of principle. Mm -hmm. It was one of those. And at the very least, it seemed the market agreed. So play of principle on the New Orleans Pelicans is a small money line underdog for me. Playable up to minus 120, in my opinion. All right, there you go. Uh, our two plays for this evening. Uh, once again, I will take the points with the defending champions, LSU, tonight. Mark it up to two and a half. It was interesting to note, just during the break, we were looking at the LSU-Iowa game. It got to two and a half minus 15. Here at Circa, it's back down to two. So it's uh, a little push and pull from that. Chuck Esposito, I texted him, odds maker here in town at Stations Casino, and he said the handle is very good for this LSU and Iowa game. That's Jonathan Von Tobel. I'm Tim Murray. Still four other NBA games and a full slate of baseball. We'll give you a little prime time primer as we get you set for a busy Monday evening. VSIN Primetime with Tim Murray and Jonathan Von Tobel on VSIN, the sports betting network. There's never been a better time to have skin in the game with DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, we got a VSIN exclusive offer for new DraftKings customers. You can earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager. You can earn up to $2,500 worth of bonus bets in your first three days on DraftKings. Don't wait. Download the app now. Use code PRIME when you sign up. Earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager. Now. That's John Von Tobel. I'm Tim Murray. It is VSIN Prime Time. The latest look on quarterbacks to go in oh. the first round. Coming up top of the hour. Seven? Eight? I'd be shocked if we didn't get 10. Maybe 15. Take a look. I'd be shocked if every first-round pick wasn't a quarterback. <laughs> I'm sensing a, a little sarcasm. No? 
A little bit. Uh, best bets in the hopper. Pelicans money line for Mr. Von Tobel against the Phoenix Suns. Magic lay the chalk. 16 and a half is the best number still, av- still available. Easy for me to say out there. And uh, give me the points with LSU, the defending champions. I will take the two and a half out there with LSU. Uh, before we get to a, a full primetime primer, well, it's part of a primetime primer because coming up this evening, you not only have LSU versus Iowa, highly anticipated matchup for women's college hoops. The evening affair, you got Juju Watson and USC against UConn, Paige Beckers and company. The three seed is the favorite against USC. We'll call it three and a half. There is a three here at Circa. That game's still to come. So very highly anticipated games tonight. Boy, did it break well for the old uh, television network yep. to have these two games back-to-back. I'm just a little disappointed that our colleague, Stormy Bonatoni, could not carry Stanford uh, to, the, to this moment so we could watch them. Yes. Uh, and, I mean, I'm also a little disappointed that we didn't get any New Balances. From uh, that's Stormy. a good point. Yeah. I mean, New Balances have come a long way. Like, it used to be like the old man shoe. But now, like, you know, guys like Kawhi Leonard and others, uh, uh, Paige, no. Who's the Cameron Brink? Yeah. Is also part of that. Uh, man, yeah. Co- yeah, Shohei, Coco Goff. By New, the way, New Balance has done very well for the, uh I'll take a pair. The, just do yourself a favor. Go look up. You know Stormy. I've never seen her and Cameron Brink in the same room together. Right. Just, just pointed out. Never seen it. So. Just, just pointing out the fact that we've never seen those two together, even though it seems like she gets a little taller when she plays for Stanford. But yeah, unfortunately, Stormy uh, could not make the run to the Final Four. Her career has uh, come to a close, a.k.a. Cameron Brink. But <laughs> looking forward to those two. Uh, John Ewing, another tweet from him. He said, Iowa women's basketball losing would be a good outcome for the sports book. I do want to get to something that you brought up, uh, a little pre-show discussion, because the sports books, and we'll get – the thoughts and the latest from Patrick Everson hour two from Vegas insider sports books got their teeth kicked in a little bit this weekend. Why does that bug us? I think we're gonna have a little discussion on that a little bit later on, but let's get to a primetime primer bunch of games going to get going here at the top of the hour. So let's run through four NBA games that will start at seven ten Eastern time. We've already hit on a best bet from you, Mr. Von Tobel in Orlando. So we'll skip that one. Brooklyn, another big spread as uh, they just gave up 40 spot to LeBron James last night in a Lakers victory. Hey, nine for 10 from three. Is that good? Pretty good. Good Lord. Uh, Brooklyn catching 13 or 12 and a half against Indiana. Quick thoughts on Nets Pacers. You know, LeBron also hit nine threes in that ridiculous comeback against the Los Angeles Clippers. I was on the wrong side of <laughs> Not that. I still think about it. Um, Brooklyn Nets. So I, the way I put this too, when I was looking at it is, it's it's that dynamic that we've discussed many times and we're going to over the last two weeks of the season, which is team that has nothing to play for taking on team that has everything to play for. Indiana is hanging on by a razor's edge for the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. They don't want to fall into the play-in. They're going to be very motivated, no matter who the opponent is, to come out and put forth a very good effort. The problem is Indiana's been really inconsistent, Tim, and I just don't know what I want to do with them, even in matchups like this. They're 8-7 and seven straight up and against the spread in the month of March. They've only got a plus 3.8 net rating in non-garbage time, so they're not really smoking opponents. I, I just I don't want to go to bat and lay, especially at this point, right, where this number opened 10 on the overnight. We're up to 13. I wouldn't want to lay the top of the price big numbers, or excuse me, top of the market big numbers like this. But I also don't want to sit back and sweat out the Brooklyn Nets needing, you know what I mean, needing Brooklyn <laughs> to save my skin here. So this is an easy one. You'll hear the, the thought process with a lot of these, but... If Brooklyn gets off, comes out, hits two threes consecutively, right, gets off to like a 10-2 lead, something like that, you're going to get a cheaper number, maybe get down to that pre-flop total, or excuse me, that pre-flop number um, at the open of minus 10, and you can lay it with Indiana. But right now, they've just been too inconsistent for me to come out and lay a big price, despite the situation of them playing for everything and Brooklyn having nothing. All right, so, all right, you don't want to get on Brooklyn, I get it. How about Charlotte catching 18 I see an 18 and a half out there at DraftKings, huh? Yeah. Charlotte at home catching 18 and a half against the Celtics? Yeah. Um, I mean, they did cover yesterday against the, uh, the Los Angeles Clippers, so I guess there's something there. They hit a million threes in that game. Uh, this was about the injuries to start the day. Uh, Jalen, it's funny how this works. You know, Christoph Porzingis is going to play. Jalen Brown is not. You know, if you lose your second best player, generally that should hurt the point spread. But Boston's so freaking deep, it doesn't really matter with these guys. <laughs> but a, a word of caution. 
as we just watched, Boston just had a two-game, three-day trip, or I think it was four days, out there in Atlanta where they had to play, take two days off, and play again. Lost both of those games outright, right? Obviously failed to cover. These are some pretty big numbers that you're dealing with here. So whether or not, you know, the Charlotte Hornets just hang around the entire time, if you are in a point, Tim, where you're up by 20 late in the fourth quarter or more, well, you're probably sitting guys, which means, as I call it, right, you know, we have the witching hour in the NFL. Yeah. We can call it scrub hour at the end of fourth quarters <laughs> where you put these guys out that don't really play that much. The pace picks up and the defense gets worse, and it's hard to cover big numbers like this. So is Boston capable of covering this number? Absolutely. Um, but that, that, that cautionary tale of having such a big number hanging in the balance and needing them to do it, it's just enough to just kind of keep me away. But again, Charlotte, nothing to play for. Boston, Actually, technically nothing to play for. They got, they got the top seed clinched. <laughs> There's nothing really there. So I think for the most part, I, I would stay away from it. So for the Celtics moving forward and these enormous spreads, and as you alluded to, they've locked up the one seed. They, they've locked up, by the way, they've locked up home court like in right. the finals as well. So like, they're good. At, at what point do we start? And, and maybe it's already started because of the back-to-back losses to the Hawks. But at what point do we start to bet against the Boston Celtics here continue on a regular basis until the playoffs start knowing that you're getting an inflated number and they don't really have much to play for. I mean, it could have been started now, right? Yeah. I mean, as we mentioned, they were a team that uh, went to Atlanta and lost those games outright. And really for the season, they like, they've really turned things around Tim. They're 38, 32 and four against the spread 54.3%. But on the road, they've been pretty average. They're 19, 18 and two against the spread. So if you, you know, they're just kind of in this nexus where they're kind of just perfectly priced. And so there's not really a ton of value in consistently going against them. And then you you see the two games in Atlanta. Well, then they go to New Orleans. They bounce back. They get off to a slow start in New Orleans on, I think, that was Saturday or Sunday. They come rolling back, back out, and they end up winning and covering as a six-point favorite on the road against a playoff team. So I, I just it's one of those where, you know, the number's probably at its peak. You might want to bet, bet against them, but they're so deep that I just don't know, even when you start to sit guys or don't really care, how tough it's going to be to consistently fade this team, even with only about what we're talking about, like six, seven games left, eight games left. There's another game that will start in the seven o'clock hour. Do you want to touch on it? I don't even know what time is it. What is it? Oh, <laughs> the Grizzlies. Detroit yeah. Pistons Did you the- read it? So I, in my article the, the today, the first <laughs> sentence was, do you really want action on this game? Um, the I've Detroit been- Pistons 13 and 61. Now, I don't know how long ago it was. I think it was right after the All-Star break on Follow the Money. Mitch Moss gave out a bet. Forget what the price was. It was like around 3-1 to that the Wizards would be the worst team in the NBA. Currently, for Mitch's bet. It's a battle. It's a battle because the Pistons, God, they suck. Uh, They're 13-61. and The Wizards. I haven't lost column. 14-61. and On the flip side, Memphis, 24-50. and It's a game. It will be played. That's all I got. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you really want the breakdown. Not really. Okay. I was okay. going to say, I mean, I can give you something. I mean, we got there. Look, I'll just say this really there's quickly. There's an edge. There's an edge, I guess. Yeah. But... I, yeah. Like I said, this is going to be the, like, we, this is the antithesis of Iowa LSU. This will be the least handled game, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> yes. of the day in all of the single sports. But I will say this. Cade Cunningham is available, so that's pretty good here for Detroit. Uh, but they're kind of playing out the string. Guys are taking time off and not really rushing back from injury. Simone Fontecchio has actually been very good for them. He's been out for a while now. He doesn't seem like he's coming back anytime soon. Marcus Sasser, uh, it looks like it's like some asthma issue. He's not going to play. It's a rotation guard that's somewhat important for him. Got nothing else other than that. Have fun if you're really going to bet this thing. Yeah, Godspeed. Good luck there uh, with your with your best bets. Uh, we'll get to well, a- got bet up three points. So there's that. <laughs> so you got that going for you, which is nice. We will get to uh, some of the baseball Action! You do have a baseball bet. You want to sneak it in before the break? Oh yeah, I just I bet uh, I I took the uh, the Mets here in the first five uh, in this matchup. So um, just real quick, it's more about the play on Mets uh, Detroit coming up seven ten. Yes, uh, and it's more of a play on Sean Mania than anything else. But uh, a little bit of a play against Reese Olsen, but wasn't like overwhelmed with Detroit in, in that match, or excuse me, in the series against Chicago, especially in that first one. Garrett Crochet kind of shut him down, and Manai, if you look at his under, underlying numbers from last year, it's a little bit better than you thought. So, late at first five. LSU Iowa Women's Showdown starting top of the hour. Iowa laying two and a half against the defending champions. 